So this is Gaudete Sunday, the Sunday of great rejoicing and joy in this uh, preparation for Christmas in the season of Advent. And just as I was looking this morning for some, just to kind of refresh my, my, my knowledge, prepare the old homily on uh, for this Sunday, I was looking through uh, some websites and I came across this lady who was a Baptist. She's a Baptist in the States. And she said that in her church when she was growing up, Advent didn't exist. So Advent was... Yeah, it just wasn't celebrated. Then she moved, as an adult, she moved uh, to a different city where she joined another Baptist church where Advent was celebrated. And she said it was, she describes it like this, she said it was love at first participation. You know, the first time she ever celebrated Advent was as an adult. And what I found really interesting was when we see Advent from the perspective of someone who hasn't celebrated it all their lives and they see it from an adult's perspective, it was very, very interesting. In the way, familiarity can breed contempt. We have Advent. We've, you've had Advent every year of your life since the year dot. And, you know, we've had Mass every day or uh, for yourselves now regularly enough. And it, it, it can happen that it becomes somehow normal. So then she, she, she's full of this excitement. She's an adult. She, was, she must have been, I think she's about 50 or 60, uh, writing about this. And uh, she said, you know, it's just so interesting. Every week, right, we get to light another candle. <laughs> And she's saying this as a, as a grown-up, like, but, you know, because we're approaching, we're approaching Christmas. And, like, do we want the Lord to live in us and you or not? Do we want the Lord to be born in us and you or not? Do we want to renew our love for Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour, or don't we? Do we want to take time to prepare it? Because we take time to prepare everything we consider important, you know, a wedding or any sort of a celebration. So this isn't just about the family coming together and that. This is about preparing a place in our hearts. Do you want to prepare? So each, as each candle is lit, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. Are you more and more prepared as each week goes by? And then she said something which just really astounds me. She said, you know, and this, this third candle, when we light the, the rose candle, uh, it's to remind us of the joy of Mary. She's a Baptist woman, like, but she's just like, this is Our Lady's expectation. We should join in her expectation for the coming of Jesus. So Gaudete Sunday is a, a, a Sunday very much in which we unite with Our Lady's joy. So Our Lady is carrying the child Jesus within her womb. Now, Jesus hasn't been manifest to the world yet, not even to her, actually. She's, she's carrying this mystery. She's carrying this, this hidden saviour within her, but with great joy and expectation, even though dare I add, the externals are awful. <coughs> Travelling on a donkey for miles and miles and then getting to a packed town, no room, no comfort, given a shed, basically, and a trough for the child to be put in. Like this, and yet still full of joy. And I think that's a great lesson to each one of us today. Some of you might remember the sexual revolution there at the end of the 60s, right? Where it was considered, the, the, the idea was very much prevalent that if you can do whatever you want, you'll be happy. If you can do whatever you feel, if you can fulfill your every passion, then you'll be happy. That's, that's happiness, that's joy, isn't it? To be able to do whatever you want. And yet, reality shows us that that's not really the case. In fact, addicts, do exactly what they want and are miserable. That they're fulfilling this, this, this desire, but they're not happy. Because happiness goes way beyond just fulfilling our desires. It, just goes, it goes way beyond satisfying our passion. The Lord is the deepest answer to all of our needs. I remember reading a while ago that the, the root of all sin the root of all sin is that we're looking for love, but looking for it in the wrong ways. You know, so you're looking, I want, to be, I want to be loved. I want to be loved. Every heart, every person wants to be loved. And because I want to be loved, I want to be rich. Because I want to be rich, you know, I want people to love me. See, oh, this person is so successful. Look at the car he's driving. Look at the house he lives in. People will think, I'm something, like I'll, I'll be a self-made man or I'm going to prove to my dad who rejected me that I am worthy of love, that I am something. And so come hell or high water, I'm going to be successful. 
So I'm going to dodge my taxes. I'm not going to pay my employees as I should. I'm going to do all these kind of things because I want to be successful at all costs. And so I'm going to work hard and, you know, the kids, uh, we'll sort them out later. What's important now is I get my business sorted. My wife, yeah, she, she'll be fine. Whatever. I don't know because she's going through stuff, but like, at the end of the day, she, she'll be okay. She'll be okay. Business, that's what's important. Get this done and then I'm something. Or in, in, in the, 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 the field of sport, pardon the pun, but to dedicate everything, everything, putting God to one side, putting family to one side in order to be successful. Uh, even all of the, the various kind of, as I say, satisfying our, our passions and addictions and all that kind of thing. Just to be loved, to feel like I'm wanted, to feel like I'm desired. It's the greatest desire of our hearts to be loved. But if it's not oriented towards God, it very much can lead us towards sin. So what's our, our true joy on this Gaudete Sunday? What is our true joy? It's a very somewhat overused expression by, by St. Augustine. But you've made us for yourself, O Lord. And our hearts are restless until they rest in you. So no matter how much success, fame, fortune, notoriety we have, it actually doesn't mean anything. Imagine, uh, a lot of young people, and you, you may have even had this desire yourself back in the day, but a lot of young people desire to be rich and famous. Why on earth would you want to be famous? I can't imagine anything more annoying. Imagine everywhere you go, you know, when you're going shopping, Every time you, you reach out for something, people are going, oh, oh, she's buying the, she's buying the cheap cornflakes. All right, yeah. And then a big spread on the, the, the following tabloid, the, the paper on the, on the following day. You know what I mean? Uh, Sister Mary buys the cheap cornflakes. Obviously, things aren't going so well in the convent. You know, and just big stories out of nothing. You know what I mean? Just kind of ridiculous stuff. Imagine, like, you see it, like, the tabloid papers are full of rich people who just want to go on a sun holiday. They just want to lie on the beach and get a bit of sun, and now they're all over the papers. They just want to walk with their child, and now the com papers are commenting on, what, why is she wearing those jeans? Obviously she's after putting on a few pounds. Ooh, she's wintered well. Like, give the person a break. Why would you want to be famous? Why would anyone want to be famous? Bless us and save us. Keep God between us, that, between that and all harm now. Uh, not at all, not at all. I don't know why you'd want to be famous. But why, why do people have that desire? Fundamentally, they have it because they want to be loved. They want people to know their name. They want to be loved. And so at times, like it, 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 this desire to be loved, it blinds us from everything around us and from the need for God, the need to love those in our presence. Remember, uh, I'm sure you've, you've seen this as, as well in your own children, grandchildren, that uh, they spend Christmas morning opening the presents and they spend the rest of the day playing with the boxes. <laughs> right? The boxes. I remember my nieces, they got one of the best gifts ever. My, my sister took delivery of a new fridge. And so the two girls had a box the size of a fridge. It was the best gift ever. Right? Because they, they could climb up on the couch and then jump on the box and the box would kind of bounce and they'd bounce off it. They turned it into a, a house, into a, a, a garage for their cars and stuff. Uh, it was a, they brought, used to bring it around with them when they came to visit us down in Thurles they'd bring the box with them you know best toy ever simplest thing in the world best fun ever they loved it they eventually ended up cutting windows on the sides of it and it was their kind of windy house fantastic uh, but so, you see the simple things it's not that the bigger the present the more elaborate the thing the more joy we have it's just not the case what makes us feel fulfilled is love is love Another issue we have today is the, the problem of internet gaming, right? Where, and by the way, computer games these days aren't designed for children anymore. They're designed for, for young people and young men. So on some of, these, some of these computer games, people will play them until 3, 4 o'clock in the morning because the internet is faster at night, so you get a better game. <clears throat> and they can be in their mid-40s. They not turn up for work. There's a friend of mine who she said when her husband gets a new game, now he's, he's my age, so he's, four, he's 38, 38, 39. <clears throat> she said when he gets a new computer game, she is a PlayStation widow. A PlayStation widow. Because as soon as he comes home from work, he's straight upstairs and he's playing for hours and hours and hours, comes, comes downstairs to eat and then disappears again until the wee hours of the morning. Because I just have to finish this level. I just have to... Because they're designed now to be 
addictive. And it gives a kind of a, a sense of fulfillment when you've achieved something. Ultimately, why? You want to be loved. You want to be successful at something. So on this Sunday, this Sunday of joy, we unite in our Blessed Lady's joy. She who knew that the Lord was her ultimate fulfillment. <coughs> That's why she says in the Magnificat, My soul rejoices in the Lord, and my spirit exults in God my Saviour. So her joy, her joy was the Lord. And so it will be for us. That's what heaven is. When we're taken to heaven, God is our ultimate joy. The only, the only fulfilment of all of our desires. That the Lord will fulfill every desire, every need for love that you have. You desire love, but what can give it to you? Well, no human being to the degree that you want, because you want so much more love. Only God can give you love to the degree that you want it, that we desire it, that you deserve it. So we ask the good Lord today that we may walk with our Blessed Lady in this season of Advent, that we may prepare ourselves for the coming of our Lord. And when he arrives, may we experience a profound joy to know that we are infinitely loved by a God who thinks we're worth dying for. Amen. <laughs>